بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد الحمد لله جلس لسن الحديث خلاص ولا منشني سامو الحديث about a very special night in the month of Shaaban which is known as the fifteenth night of Shaaban ليلة النصف من Shaaban the midnight of Shaaban so last week we talk about uh, we talked about the importance and significance of the month of Shaaban. It is a very special month that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would him, in, engage himself in fasting throughout the month of Shaaban. And uh, now one of this uh, night in the month of Shaaban is the Laylatul Nisf min Shaaban or fifteenth night of Shaaban. So what do we find about uh, this night? This, uh, this night is very prominent, especially in Indian subcontinent. As Shabe Barat. Shabe Barat is actually two words, one from Farsi word Shab means night and Barat is from Arabic. So they combined this two word into one and made Shabe Barat. In Arabic we can say Laylatul Bara'a. Laylatul Bara'a. What, where did this name come from? This name actually came from uh, in Tafsir Mawardi. It has been narrated by that uh, Ikrama Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned, one of the students of Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma. Abdullah bin Abbas is one of the cousins of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prominent mufassir of the Quran. Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhu he mentioned that you know Laylatul Qadr is Laylatul Ta'zim and the 15th night of Shaaban, the Laylatul Nisim in Shaaban is Laylatul Bara'a. Is Laylatul Bara'a meaning the night of salvation. Bara'a meaning actually salvation from the hellfire because Allah subhanahu wa taala grants salvation. To his servants in the night of uh, in the night of fifteenth uh, of Shaaban, this is why this night is called as Laylatul Bara'a. There are many other names as we mentioned in other uh, tafsir books. For example, in Tafsir Kashaf, this uh, night has been given four names: Laylatul Mubaraka, Blessed Night; Laylatul Bara'a, the Night of Salvation; Laylatul Sak, Laylatul Sak, the Night of Giving Check. You know, when you after doing a bath, you know, after doing your work, you know. The uh, employer give you check. This is why this night has been called Laylatul the Sakh. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant reward to your servants and Laylatul Rahma, the night of mercy. The other four names have been mentioned in Tafsir Kashaf and many other Tafsir books has you know some of these uh, names of uh, this special night. Now, what do we find in the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about uh, Laylatul Nisr min Shaaban or the 15th night of Shaaban? Or is there any significance of this night? So we find that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned, "Yatari Allahu ila khalqihi fi laila al-nisr min Shaaban, fa yafir li jamia khalqi illa li mushkin aw mushahin." Verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala turns to His entire creation on the fifteenth night of Shaaban, and He forgives His entire creation except a polytheist, a person who associate partner with Allah, and one who has enmity, who has hatred. Against a Muslim in his heart, these are two groups of people. Allah Subhanahu does not forgive. Other than every other creation is forgiven by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the night of uh, now midnight of Shaaban, 15th night of Shaaban, which is known to us as Laylatul Bara'a. So this hadith has been narrated through various chains from numerous companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, including Sayyidina Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu. Sayyida Aisha radiyallahu anha, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abu Hurayra, Rahimah radiyallahu anhum. Imam ibn Hibban narrated this hadith, this hadith in his Sahih, ibn Hibban, as did Imam al-Tabarani rahimahullah ta'ala in his Mu'jam al-Kabir and Mu'jam al-Aswad, and Imam Bayhati rahimahullah alayhi in his Fadail al-Awqat. So all these scholars of hadith mention this hadith in uh, their books. One of the you know, uh, prominent muhaddis of our time, especially respected by those who actually deny Laylatul Bara'at, uh, Shaykh Nasir bin Albani, he narrated uh, this hadith in his book, Silsilatu Ahadith Sahiha, and he made the following comments. He, may, he mentioned Hadithun Sahih. This hadith is a Sahih hadith. Ruwi'an Jama'atin min al Sahaba. This hadith has been narrated from a number of Sahaba. Through various chains, which strengthen one another, the companions which this hadith has been narrated by are Muad ibn Jabal, Abu Thalib al Khushani, Abdullah ibn Amr, Abu Musa al Ashari, Abu Huraira, Abu Bakr al Siddiq, 
Auf ibn Malik and Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu anhum. So there are eight companions. This hadith has been narrated by. He also mentioned, Shaykh Albani also mentioned, وَجُمْلَةُ الْقَوْلِ أَنَّ الْحَدِيثَ بِمَجْمُوعِ هَذِي الطُرُقِ صَحِيحٌ بِلَا غَيْبٍ The conclusion is that this hadith collectively with all its various roots is sahih. So now many scholars have mentioned this hadith as sahih. There are you know, a few other hadiths like this that have been narrated uh, by you know, uh, the scholars and they mention many of these hadiths are sahih, actually authentic hadiths. Now, uh, you know, if we go through the, some of the sayings of the previous ulama, the our salaf, the, uh, time, from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, who is the son of Umar radiallahu anhu, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma, he narrated, he, he stated, he said that خَمْسَ لَيَالِ لَا تُرَدُّ فِيهِنَّ الدُّعَى There are five nights that dua is never rejected. There are five nights that dua is not rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَيْلَةُ الْجُمُعَةِ The night of Friday, night of Jumu'ah. وَأَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ رَجَبْ The first night of Rajab. وَلَيْلَةُ النِّسْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ The fifteenth night of Shaaban. وَلَيْلَةَيِ الْعِيدَيْنِ And the two nights of Eid. So these are the five nights actually dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is mentioning that Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhuma one of the close companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know this has been mentioned uh, in now Musnad Abdul Razak and Al Musannaf Abdul Razak rahimahullah ta'ala in his Musannaf so this hadith we can find that also the one of the Tabi'i, Atta ibn Yasser rahimahullah, he reported, he said that ma min laylatin ba'da laylatin qadri afdalu min laylatin nisu min sha'ban. There is no night that is more virtuous than the, you know, uh, after the laylatul qadr, than the 15th night of sha'ban. Meaning, after laylatul qadr, the best night, the most virtuous night is the night of uh, laylatul, laylatul nisu min sha'ban, or the 15th night of sha'ban. This has been mentioned by Atta ibn Yasa, who is a tabi'i, meaning the student of the, uh, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It has been narrated regarding the tabi'in of Sham, the tabi'in, the tabi'un who is to live in Sham from Syria. It has been narrated from them, uh, about them, that the tabi'un of Sham, including Khalid ibn Ma'dan, Makhul, Luqman ibn Amir, wa ghayruhum, that these three, uh, three, three tabi'in, and many others, what they used to do, يُعَظِّمُونَهَا وَيَجْتَهِدُونَ فِيهَا فِي الْعِبَادَةِ That uh, they used to hold the 15th night of Sha'ban in high esteem and engage in worship during the night. So we find that even the Tabi'un, who are the Tabi'un again, if you remember, that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, خَيْرُ you الْقُرُونِ know, قَرْنِ The best, best, best time is my time, the best nation is my nation. Then, ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونَهُمْ Then after them, ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يَلُونَهُمْ Then after them. Meaning, Sahaba, first. Second is Tabi'un. Third is the Tabi'a Tabi'un. These are three generations that have been mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the best generation. So anything that have been practiced by these three generations and is a hujja, is a dalil, is a proof for us. So we can see the Tabi'un from Syria. What they used to do, they used to you know, uh, hold this night as high esteem and they would you know, engage in worship during the night of the 15th of Sha'ban. It has been narrated from Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala. As you know, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, who was a, a very prominent figure in our, in, in our religion, uh, who has been regarded as the fifth Khalifa. So after Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali, you know, as, as, uh, because of his righteousness, not because of his time, he came a lot after, you know, uh, them. However, he is regarded the fifth Khalifa. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to you know, say, Alayka bi arba'i layalin fi sana. Take hold of uh, four nights of the year. Take hold of four nights of the year. For Allah subhanahu ta'ala showers his mercy in those nights. The first night of Rajab, the 15th night of Sha'ban, and the nights of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. So these are the four nights. Uh, no, it's been mentioned by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala. 
Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala is one of the Imam of this four school. He is the Imam of uh, Shafi'i Madhab. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he stated, Balagana annahu kana yuqal, that it has reached us, that it is to be said, inna dua yustajabu fi khamsi layalin. Dua is accepted in five nights, and he mentioned the five nights that mentioned by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. One of the scholar, the early scholar of Hanbali Madhab, Imam Ibn Muflih al Hanbali rahimahullah, he said, the 15th night of Sha'bad is virtuous as transmitted from Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala. So Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala is one of the founder of one of the four Madhab, and Hanbali Madhab, and Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, his student, Ibn Muflih al Hanbali is mentioning that it has been reached to us from, uh, transmitted from Imam Ahmad, that who along with other Hanbali scholars have narrated many virtues which are well known in the books of Hadith. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, one of the you know, very prominent figure in our Islam as well, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he described this night as a virtuous night. So he mentioned, وَمِنْ هَذَا الْبَابِ لَيْلَةُ النِّسْمِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَقَدْ رُوِيَ فِي فَضْلِهَا مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ الْمَرْفُوعَةِ وَالْآثَارِ that ahadith and reports concerning the 15th night of Sha'ban are such that they establish this night to be a very blessed night. It is a very, very much virtuous or blessed night. The pious predecessors, the early scholars, early ulamas of our deen, they would single out this night for worship. So they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would single out this night to perform more worship, and uh, who is mentioned, is mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, may Allah be pleased and uh, have mercy upon him. So we can see that, that many scholars have mentioned about the night of uh, this very special night. So what should we do in this night? In regarding that, we find a hadith uh, in narrated by Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. This hadith has been narrated by Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala in his Shu'abul Iman. So Imam Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned this hadith in Shu'abul Iman. And he mentioned that the, uh, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passing away, once one of the companion, Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu, if you heard of his name you know, frequently, Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu, he went to Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha said to uh, uh, Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu that, you know, could you please tell me something that, you know, you heard from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you tell me, then, you know, I will tell you something as well. So Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu anhu, he, he mentioned that whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would come out for the salah for fajr, he used to make a dua. He used to say, Allahumma bla sam'i nura, wa basari nura, wa min bayni yadayya nura, wa min khalfi nura, wa an yameeni nura, wa an shimali nura, wa min fawqi nura, wa min tahti nura, wa azim lin nura bi rahmatik. This means, oh Allah, please grant nur, please grant light in my in my hearing, in my and eye, in my eyesight, grant me nur in, uh, from my front, grant me nur from my back, grant me nur from my right hand side, grant me nur from my left hand side, grant me nur and uh, from my top, grant me nur from my underneath. So and you know, fill me with nur. Uh, so this is the hadith and uh, uh, narrated by Abu Sa'id Khudira the Allahu that he said Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite this dua. So after that, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she mentioned that you know, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to my house at night after Isha, when he came to my house, or when to come to my room, he was about to change his clothes at night time. When he was almost you know, changing his clothes, he stopped. And you know, he put his clothes back on. He put his clothes back on. And then, you know, he went out. So I thought maybe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to some of his other wife's house. You know, you can imagine 
and a, a, a woman, and a, some of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're living in each room. So Aisha said, Radhi Allah, she is honest. She's saying that, you know, I thought the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night, she came to my house and now going out again. Maybe she's going to some of you know, his other wife's house. So I, you know, followed him. I, you know, I was watching that where is he going? I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the cemetery of Jannatul Baqi. Those who have been to Medina, you have seen the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is actually the house of Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha. Wherever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is buried, it was the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And Jannatul Baqi is just a few steps away, you know, not very far. So she said, when I came out of my house, I saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in in Jannatul Baqi making dua for the believers. He was making dua for the Muslim male and female and for the shuhada, the martyrs of Islam. So when you know I I saw that I was I was telling to my to myself that you know my father and my mother be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. What are you doing and what I was thinking about you? SubhanAllah, what you are doing and what I was thinking about, about you. So I you know rushed now back to my uh, room, I came back to my house and I was you know, breathing heavily. I was breathing heavily because I, you know, I, 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 if I was caught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I was running and rushing, I came back home and I was breathing heavily. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back and he asked me, oh, Aisha, what's wrong? Why are you breathing heavily? So she said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, uh, my father and my mother, my parents be sacrificed for your sake, you know, when you came home, you were changing your clothes and then you stopped changing and you put the clothes back on and, you know, when you went out, so I had some uh, wrong thought in my mind that I was thinking maybe you have you know, gone some you know, two of, uh, of your other wife's house. So, you know, I uh, followed you and I saw you that you were making dua in Jannatul Baqi, standing there making dua for the believers, male and female, and the, for the shuhada. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told her, Wa Aisha, were you, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, uh, scared that or fearful that Allah and his messenger would do zulum with you? Meaning, this night is yours. Why did you think that Allah and his messenger, meaning whatever the person do, he does it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did you think that Allah or His Messenger would do zulm or an unjust and be unjust to you? Then, you know, uh, the, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, Jibreel Alayhi Salam came to me and he told me tonight is the 15th night of Sha'ban, Laylatul Bismillah in Sha'ban, the midnight of Sha'ban. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will grant salvation to as many um, as many followers of my Ummah. And as many hairs that grows in the sheep of the tribe Bani Kalb. So Bani Kalb is a famous tribe in Arab and they had many sheep and those sheep is to have many you know, hairs. You can imagine how many hairs a sheep can have and how many millions of sheep you know, in the tribe of the uh, Bani Kalb would have. So you know, the Prophet Sallallahu said that in that night Allah Subhanahu Wa will forgive all and the, um, oh no, oh, the ummah of my prophet of, of me as many numbers as the hair that has the sheep of Bani Kalb except a few groups of people among them a person who associate partnership with Allah the shirik with Allah a person who is envy jealous against other Muslim a person who cut the relationship with his you know with his relatives with his kins a person who you know a man who uh, you know uh, drags his clothes beneath his uh, uncles, you know, out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, showing off. Then, you know, the people who are disobedient to their parents and a person who, you know, he, he who drinks alcohol, drinks wine. These are the groups of people Allah subhanahu wa does not forgive in that night. Other than all other people are forgiven in this night. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he changed his clothes. And he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, Wa Aisha, would you allow me to stand in prayer, stand in worship for Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight. Subhanahu, look at the you know, justice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the messenger, he's the Prophet of Allah, he's the Sayyid Bani Adam. You know, he could have done whatever he wanted. Yet he was asking his wife that yes, tonight is yours. I know I should sleep with you, I should spend night with you. However, because this special night, would you allow me to stand in prayer? So Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she replied, Ya Rasulullah, let my parents be, be sacrificed for you. This is, the, you know, uh, this, this is an impression that all the companions, all, they used to say all the time, Ya Rasulullah, let my parents be sacrificed for you. So Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, let my parents be sacrificed for you. You know, why wouldn't I allow you to, you know, do that? Go ahead and do it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up for Salah in that night and he did very, very long sijda. He did very long sijda. So Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she, th- she said, you know, uh, the Prophet was giving such a long sijda that I thought maybe the Prophet Sallallahu soul was taken away. Maybe he passed away. You know, maybe his soul has been taken away. So I was you know, knocking on him and you know, I, uh, I put my hand you know, beneath his feet to check if he had soul in. So in, in that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, moved a little bit. So I became happy and pleased that you know, he is alive. So I went to his, next to his mouth, next to his, his you know, face and he, I heard that he is making a dua. He was reciting a dua. He was saying, أعوذ بعفوك من عقابك وأعوذ برضاك من سخطك وأعوذ بك منك جل وجهك لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثناء أثنيت على نفسي. So it means I I you know uh, seek uh, for your forgiveness from your punishment. Ya Allah, I seek your forgiveness from your punishment. I seek your pleasure. From your wrath, from your anger, I, you know, I seek your. Uh, I, I'm asking your refuge from you. You are the, you know, la thana, la uksi salaam alayka, anta kama snaida ala nafsik. That I am not able to praise you as you are worthy of, you uh, know, praise. You know. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that. Aisha said that the hard that she memorized the dua. In the morning, Aisha Siddiqa is continuing to say, she said that in the morning, I mentioned this dua to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu asked me, Aisha, did you already memorize uh, this, this dua, these words? She said, I, I said, yes, Rasulullah, yes, I, I did it. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you learn it and you know, teach it others because Angel Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam taught me these words and he told me to recite this, this dua, these words in sajda, these words in sajda. So this hadith is narrated by Imam Bayhaqi in his Shu'abul Iman. Imam Bayhaqi mentioned this, the sanad of this hadith is weak. Sanad of this hadith is weak. However, this hadith has been narrated by you know, uh, uh, many other narrations as well. However, we know the scholars have mentioned that if any you know, weak hadith can be used to you know, act upon something that has been permitted. So we know that whatever the Prophet did in that night, you know, every action is in Islam. You know, visiting the graveyards, reciting, you know, uh, performing salah at night, doing long sajdah, you know, making du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all are proved by many other hadiths. So you know, although this hadith is da'if, it will not be a problem. So what we learn from this hadith is, the Prophet gave importance to that, to that night he performed salah, he, par- he made dua, and he visited Muslims buried in the graveyard, in the cemetery. So, you know, those ones to follow that night, as we know from authentic hadith, this is a special night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives so many people. Now, you know, some, some brothers, those who argue that you, do not do, you should not do anything that night, they will say, Allah will forgive you anyway. So why do you have to you know, worship or why do you have to do something else in that night? Let's, let us look at incident. When the people of Badr, Ashab Badr, uh, when they came back from the battlefield, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed regarding them, I'malu ma shi'tum, do whatever you want. Qad ghafar Allah lakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you. Allah has forgiven you, do whatever you want. 
However, these people, did they do whatever they wanted? No. They increased their worship. They increased their devotion. They increased their ibadah for the sake of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. So we can learn from these companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, you know, he announced that he will forgive us in that night. So shouldn't we be more conscious, more, you know, accepting of the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that night and, you know, make ourselves busy in worshipping Allah, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many other hadiths also mentioned the dua is accepted in that night. Other hadiths mentioned those who seek forgiveness from Allah, Allah forgives them. Those who seek you know, rahmah from Allah, Allah gives rahmah upon them in that night. So this is a very special night that we should you know, engage ourselves in that night. In the history, we find that you know, uh, Imam Allama Fakihi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in, in his book, Akhbar Makkah. Akhbar Makkah, the history of Makkah. And you know, he, he mentioned that the people of Makkah all at that time, meaning at around 200 after the Prophet Sallallahu demise, and up to 200 within the Hijrah. So it's like you know, 1200 years ago. What they used to do in the 15th night of Sha'ban, Shab- male and female, the residents of Mecca, they would go to Masjid Haram. In the 15th night of Sha'ban, uh, Shab- they would perform Salah. They would do Tawaf around the Kaaba. They would recite the Quran in the Haram. They would, you know, some of them even would do the Khutum of the Quran, the whole Khutum of the Quran in one night. And they would, you know, a drink zamzam water, they would do ghusl with zamzam water in that night, and they would, you know, keep some zamzam water in that night for the ill people and give them to drink. And they would seek baraka from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this action. So, this uh, no, narration mentioned by Imam Faqihi rahimahullah ta'ala in his Akhbaru Makkah, the history of Makkah. And Imam Faqihi wrote this book, you know, uh, like 1200 years ago. So we can imagine, subhanAllah, these actions and this ibadah have been practiced by the by our salaf, the earlier ulamas. So inshallah, tomorrow night is the night of Laylatul Bara'at, Laylatul Nisri Min Sha'ban. We should try to engage ourselves, you know, especially we are so you know, full of sins because Allah subhanahu is giving us an opportunity to go, to come, to come back to Him, to, you know, seek forgiveness from Him, to, you know, most of the night of the year we cannot stand in prayer. This is the night, very special night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling us. Why shouldn't we stand in front of him? Remember him, make dua to him, recite Quran, recite you know, salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give charity, make nafal namaz. So there is no number of nafal namaz has been narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can do as many as you want. You can read as many Quran as you want. You can give as many charity as you want. There is nothing specified for that night. As a nafal ibadah, whatever we do, we can do that uh, in that night as well. There's another hadith uh, mentioned by Ibn Majah, rahimahullah ta'ala, from Ali radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned about fasting the following day, which is 15th of Sha'ban. 15th of Sha'ban is, you know, it, it is a sunnah day anywhere because every month we found out 13th, 14th, and 15th of each month is the Sunnah uh, fasting. So while you do fasting on the 15th of Sha'ban, you're going to fall between 13th, 14th, and 15th. Also, you know, Sha'ban is a very blessed month for fasting. So you are fasting on the 15th of Sha'ban, it falls in that category as well. As well as from the hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu, if you want to do the fast on 15th, you will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. اللهم آمين صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم